My name is Aaliyah and welcome to another reading vlog. So today I'm trying to do a spooky 24 hour readathon in celebration of Summer Ween, which is coming up. And unfortunately, I can't participate in summer winging because I'm gonna be on vacation. So when you're seeing this, I'm probably at the lake. Um, but summer winging is a readathon that's all about reading spooky books in the summer. And it was created by Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte and Gabby from Gabby Reads. And they basically created it because they wanted to be able to read spooky books even if it wasn't October. And it's kind of a way to like celebrate Halloween you know, without having to wait all the way till Halloween. So, I'm gonna try to read some spooky books, and I'm kind of new to reading horror, that's not usually my main genre, but I do like books about ghosts and haunted houses and stuff like that. So, I decided to go ahead and go for it. So, you're probably wondering, what are we gonna be reading? I'm so glad you asked. So, I've already started one book, and that's Hurricane Season, and this is written by a Mexican author, and it's actually a translated book, and it's about these two women in this small Mexican village who everybody says are witches. And one of the witches gets murdered and everybody in the village is trying to solve the murder of who killed the witch. And it's a little bit of a weird book. That's an understatement. It's a really weird book. It's probably one of the weirdest books I've ever read, actually. And it's weird because it's written, like here you can see, there's no paragraphs at all. Every page is just like big blocks of text. And the writing style is kind of funky. It's written kind of in a crude sort of way. And there's a lot of like sex and drug use and um, domestic abuse and things like that. And each chapter is written from the perspective of a new character, but it doesn't tell you who the character is. So each chapter is from a different point of view of somebody in the village, and it's kind of their personal take on the witch and maybe how she died and their relationship with her and their relationship with other people who knew her and that sort of thing. So it's a weird one, but it's spooky. It's about witches. The witch lives in a creepy house. It's kind of a whole thing. but. I'm about 70 pages in right now and I'm enjoying it because there's no paragraphs. It's kind of addictive. So I've kind of just been binge reading it. So I think it's going to be good for a 24 hour readathon, even though the writing is a little bit dense. And then I also want to read The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Now, T. Kingfisher is an author I've been wanting to pick up for a really long time and I just haven't gotten around to it. I know that she writes some fantasy books and some horror books and lots of different stuff. But this one is about a woman who works in a shop that her uncle runs. And I think it might be like a shop that has antiques and taxidermy animals and that sort of thing. So I guess in the back of the shop there's this door and she realizes that the door is a portal to another world. And so she goes into this other world and things get spooky from there. I think. Maybe there's some monsters and creepy things that she runs into in this other world. Yeah. And the last one I'm going to try to read is The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. And this is a newer release I just got from the library. Sorry for the glare. <laughs> but I just got this one and it's about a woman and she, I think she goes back I should read the flap. Why don't I just read the flap? Uh, when social worker Jax receives nine missed calls from her older sister Alexi, she assumes it's just another one of her sister's episodes. Okay, so this one is about a woman who is investigating her sister's death, and it has to do with water. Her sister is supposedly drowned, and so I've heard this is a ghost story. I've heard it has to do, it's like a water horror book which is kind of cool. I haven't really read anything like that before. So I'm interested to check it out. I've also never read anything from Jennifer McMahon before, but I know she also wrote The Winter People, which a lot of people really like. That's also another horror novel. So yeah, that's what we've got going on at the moment. All the spooky books. But yes, and you've also probably noticed that this is not where I normally, this is not where I normally film, but I thought I would give it a try. This is my desk. 
and here I'll show you. These are like some different paintings that I've done and stuff. This is one I'm working on right now. I just started painting that one like a couple days ago. But yeah, so I'm gonna go read and I will update you probably when I've read some more of hurricane season. now Sunday and I just got home from work and I thought I would give you a reading update. So I've read some more of Hurricane Season and I'm almost done. I'm like 140 pages in now and I actually really like it so far. I think it's either going to be four or five stars which was unexpected because I almost DNF'd it at first because it was so weird. So, it's basically, like I said, it's about all these people who live in this Mexican village who are trying to solve the murder of this witch lady who got murdered. Um, and every chapter is from a different character's perspective, so the writing style is a little bit weird, and there's no paragraphs. So, all of that is kind of jarring, but the actual story is really interesting. So each chapter you get to see a different person's perspective and usually each chapter kind of follows a new character that we met in the previous chapter so you get to see everybody's interpersonal relationships with each other um, I think that's like the real reason why this book got shortlisted in 2020 because it's really all about like interpersonal relationships and the way that the book makes you sympathize with every person who has their own chapter. So, like, in one chapter, you know, like, there's a character who's a drug addict, and his mom kind of thinks that he's, like, a loser. But then you get to see from the point of view of his girlfriend, and you get to see that he's actually a good person. And so you sort of sympathize with all these people. And then the next thing you know, you're super invested in everybody else who was even slightly related to the witch or knew her in any way. So it's really interesting. And there's this girl who is pregnant and a big part of the story is like her baby and um, her relationship with the witch and her boyfriend's relationship with the witch and all of that. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. And I think that one thing though is that there's a lot of trigger warnings for this book. So trigger warnings for violence and sexual assault and grooming and unwanted pregnancy and drug abuse and prostitution. I think hurricane season is kind of like Mexican Gothic where it's set in this little Mexican village and it's about interpersonal relationships but this one is a lot more um, like crude. It's very sexual and explicit and dark. So, just be aware of that if you want to read this. But I think it's really well written though, I have to say. Don't mind the traffic noises, it's loud out here, but it's so hot. So, whatever, we're rolling with it. But, yeah, so I think hurricane season is actually surprisingly really good. So that's kind of fun. And it's, it's also, I don't know if it's necessarily like a spooky book like on goodreads it says that it's horror and that there's witches right so you're thinking that it's going to be more paranormal but really it's it's not it's really more about the people in the village who aren't the witches basically so yeah 
And then also while I was at work, I listened to all of the audiobook for The Black God's Drums by P. DeJolie Clark and I really really enjoyed it. It's my favorite novella by him that I've read so far and that one's about this girl named Jacqueline and she is 13 and she's living on the streets and she's a thief and she's an orphan and it's set in like a fantasy version of New Orleans and it's kind of steampunk. There's airships and really cool stuff like that um, but there's also this interesting like historical aspect to it where it's set in New Orleans but um, it's a different version of history where um, the slave revolution in Haiti like changed the world and the slave rebellion was successful and um, it impacted all these other countries and so um, the, all the black slaves that were in the US are all were like all freed and um, the civil war that happened in the US is like still going on and so there's confederate soldiers and union soldiers and um, freed slaves and it's really interesting um, and I like the Black Gods drums because there's a lot of really cool cultural stuff in it. So it's set in, well, some parts of it are kind of set like in the bayou and there's a lot of Creole language and culture and there's also like they're eating jambalaya and it's really cool. And there's also African gods in it, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really interesting novella and I don't think enough people are talking about it because it's super, super good. So unfortunately, it's the only novella of his or story of that author's that's set in that world. Um, a lot of his other stuff is set in Egypt. So I'm kind of hoping that he writes some more stuff that's set in New Orleans in this world because it's really cool. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm probably going to give that like... 4.5 or 5 stars because I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, but yeah, I wasn't going to read that for this vlog, but I thought it was horror originally for some reason, but it's not. It's definitely fantasy, steampunk kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I did read that during this time, so I thought I would tell you even though it's not really spooky, but whatever. I mean, there are there is like a villain in the story that dresses up in like a creepy skeleton mask and so do kind of his cronies that work with him um but aside from that it's not really spooky and like there is mention of mardi gras and stuff too um but it's not really like paranormal or anything so yeah that's where i'm at and i'm planning on finishing hurricane season and maybe also starting the drowning kind by jennifer mcmahon so yeah that's my plan and i will update you when i have one hi i'm back with a reading update so i've now finished hurricane season and i think i'm gonna give it 4.5 stars i really enjoyed it and everything that i said before was still true at the end about how this is mostly a story about interpersonal relationships more than it is like a paranormal story about the witches. Um, but I think that each chapter of this book kind of shows you a little more information about why the witch ended up being murdered. So um, it goes into like the things that the witch was doing and the people that she was involved with and the potions that she was giving to women to kind of like cure their problems. Um, and so all of those things kind of come together to manifest the reasons why she ended up dead. And a lot of the reasons don't really have to do with things that she did. It's more like other people not finding healthy ways to deal with their problems, essentially. So the main thing with this book is that I think 
well, for one thing, it's really violent and sexual, so if you want to read it, be aware of that. But I also think if you're interested in um, the cycles of violence and generational trauma, that you'll really like this book, because at the heart of it, it's basically about this small Mexican village and all the people who live there and how a lot of their parents were into drugs and violence and a lot of the kids in this town end up um, having sex really early and there's a lot of teen pregnancy and prostitution and drug use and a lot of things going on and it's kind of like everyone in the town is involved in that and so then the story of the witch's murder is put within the context of the cyclical violence in the town and it starts to make a lot more sense why the people are doing what they're doing and how they feel like they don't have another choice and there's all these things going on so i think if generational trauma interests you you should definitely check this out um but be aware that it's very violent and sexual and dark and kind of gritty so just know that but I also thought it was cool because this has a trans character in it and there's also a lot of talk in like the second half of this book about um, queerness and there is some homophobia in this so trigger warnings for that also but um, there's multiple teenage boys in this book who are kind of struggling with their sexuality and struggling to come to terms with that within the context of their village and sort of the masculine stereotypes of like being straight and the pressures of being in gangs and what the gang members expect from them and what their families expect from them and all of those things. So it was definitely very good. I liked that it was queer. I liked that it was dark. And the writing is definitely very addictive, so it was actually a really quick read for me, I have to say. So, that one's done. And I think I'm going to pick up The Hollow Places and start that. I probably won't finish it in this vlog, but I do want to at least start it because I've had this on my TBR for a while. And I think this is about a girl who works in her uncle's like taxidermy shop and she finds a door in the back of the shop that ends up being a portal to a spooky world. So it's supposed to be horror, it's supposed to be creepy. I got this off of Kayla from Books and Law Law's recommendation, so I'm excited to try it and see what I think. I really want to read from T. Kingfisher. I also want to read some of her fantasy books that she has because they look really cute. So yeah, I'm going to start this and then I will come back and tell you my thoughts and then probably wrap up this vlog. So yeah. Oh, also, before I forget, so Hurricane Season is queer, and the other book that I read earlier, The Black God's Drums, is also queer. So that has some sapphic relationships going on in it. So yes, two of the books that I finished in this vlog, both queer. Both great reads. Recommend both of them. So yes, okay, now I'm gonna go read. Bye. <laughs> Jeez. Hello. You're on camera. <laughs> Anything you want to say to your massive audience? 
all your millions of fans. I fed some ducks today. That was pretty cool. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Hi, it's time to wrap up this vlog. So, um, I got a new haircut, so that's fun. That's a good time. Okay, so I've read a little bit more of The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher, and I like it so far. Um, it's not as spooky as I thought it would be. The beginning is actually kind of more funny than anything else, so I don't know. It's kind of got a little bit of spooky stuff, but I think it's going to get spookier later on in the book. Um, and then to recap, I also read Hurricane Season, which I gave like 4.5 stars, and I read The Black God's Drums, which I also really liked and gave that 4.5 stars as well. So overall, pretty successful vlog. Um, it kind of went a little longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. That's cool. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. I had a fun time making it. If you enjoyed this video, then you should go check out some of my other videos. And also remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!